Within the construction division at the Port of Los Angeles, a small but important team of employees is responsible for collecting data to map the seafloor. Knowing the condition of the seabed at our terminals allows us to determine whether the depths are sufficient enough to bring ships in safely, ensures that our waterways are free of hazards to navigation, and helps us plan for future dredging projects at the port. The team responsible for obtaining data to map the seafloor is our hydrographic survey crew. The team members, consisting of Jamil Fernandez and Chris Waretka, use a data collection system comprised of several pieces of equipment. The construction division has recently procured a new data collection system to replace older and outdated equipment. It was installed in March and the hydrographic survey crew has now incorporated it into their workflow. The first piece of equipment in the system is a multi-beam echo sounder. The particular echo sounder the construction division obtained is called the Rezon T20R. Simply put, the echo sounder is a device that sends out sonar, or sound waves, and measures their two-way travel time to the seabed and back up to the echo sounder. Located at the back of the survey boat, it is mounted on a steel assembly that can be raised and lowered in the water using hydraulics. This allows the hydrographic survey crew to lower the echo sounder into the water when performing a survey, and raise it out of the water when not in use, preventing any marine growth or salt water from damaging or corroding it. The Rezon T20R is mainly made up of two modules. The first module is a projector, which sends out as many as 1,024 beams of sound waves down to the seabed. The second module is a receiver, which receives the sound waves when they return from bouncing off the seafloor. The depth of the seafloor can then be determined by the amount of time it takes the sound waves from being projected out of the echo sounder to when it returns. Another piece of equipment in the system are the GPS antenna. The system includes two GPS antenna located on the roof of the boat's cabin, which are responsible for obtaining the boat's position at all times during the survey. Under the floor near the center of the boat is another piece of equipment in the system, called the Inertial Measurement Unit, or IMU. The IMU is a small box containing gyros and accelerometers, and is responsible for determining which way the boat is oriented at all times. It works much like a cell phone. Cell phones have similar instruments in them that allow it to sense when its orientation is in portrait or landscape mode, or when it's being rotated as one is viewing a panoramic photo. The IMU is serving the same purpose, informing the system where the survey boat is pointing or rotating to at all times. The final piece of equipment is a sonar processor, or simply the brains of the system. It is essentially a computer mounted on a rack inside the cabin with specialized hydrographic survey software. The sonar processor takes all this information, the depth of the seafloor, the location of the boat and the vessel's orientation to obtain the seabed surface within about one meter accuracy. The sonar processor also takes a rendering of the seafloor that allows the hydrographic surveyor to essentially see what the seabed looks like in real time as the boat is passing over it. The hydrographic survey crew will perform a number of parallel passes along the terminal, similar to how one would make several parallel passes in the front yard when mowing the lawn until they've collected enough data to cover the entire length of the terminal and out to the middle of the channel. As they survey the sea floor, they'll make any needed on-the-fly adjustments to the echo sounder settings to ensure they obtain the cleanest and clearest data possible. In addition, they observe the bottom for any anomalies or possible hazards to navigation. Any possible hazards are reported to the port police for further investigation or to the Construction and Maintenance Division for removal. After data collection has been completed, an instrument called a sound profiler is used to obtain the speed of sound in the water. The hydrographic survey team lowers the sound profiler into the water and records the speed of sound at one meter intervals until it reaches the seabed. These readings from the sound profiler will further improve the calculation of the seafloor depth later. Once the survey has been completed, the data is brought into the hydrographic survey field office to be post-processed. Post-processing the data begins with applying a certain number of corrections to the data to make it even more precise. 
These steps improve the accuracy of the data from roughly one meter to within one centimeter. After applying the needed corrections, the hydrographic surveyor proceeds to the next step in post-processing, editing of the sounding data. Oftentimes, the data will contain extraneous noise or false soundings, which would need to be edited or deleted out of the data. Noise in the data is generally the result of the sonar beams hitting debris, seaweed, or kelp in the water, but it can also be the result of sonar beams hitting fish or other wildlife. A hydrographic survey crew member will inspect the data from the survey to ensure all noise are edited out and ensure the final data set is the most accurate representation of the seafloor. The final step in post-processing is creating a sounding map of the terminal. The hydrographic surveyor will import the data into their mapping software, called Autodesk Civil 3D, to create a sounding map. This map contains elevations of the seabed in a grid format. The sounding map also includes contours to help give a larger view of the topography of the seafloor at that terminal. Lastly, the sounding map includes information about that particular survey, such as the date and location of the survey, the names of the crew members performing the survey, and the horizontal and vertical datums being used. These sounding maps are then distributed to different divisions and personnel within the port. They are utilized by the port pilots to determine if ships can be berthed safely at the terminals, by engineers to plan future dredging projects, by marketing to show the depths of the seabed at port terminals, among others. These sounding maps exhibit the important contribution the hydrographic survey team makes to our bustling and thriving port. Music